Today I'm going to talk about mental health and music. Now it's not uh, World Mental Health Day or Mental Health Awareness Week, but here at the Early Music Shop we believe that this is a topic for every day of the year. And it's certainly one which t touches every musician in the profession today. In 2016, the charity Help Musicians UK conducted a survey called Can, M Can Music Make You Sick? which asked over 2,000 working musicians a series of questions about their mental health and working lives. This was the world's largest academic study into music and mental health before to this point, and it revealed that the music community may be almost th uh, three times as likely to experience depression compared to the general public. 71% of respondents reported that they had experienced panic attacks or high level of anxiety, and 68% had experienced depression. From a personal perspective, I myself have suffered from both mild to moderate depression and periods of severe anxiety during my career, and I don't know many musicians who haven't at some point suffered from mental ill health. Sadly, I've also experienced uh, several friends and colleagues and promising careers in early music because of mental ill health. So, why do musicians suffer disproportionately from mental health issues? Well, of course, the Help Musicians survey came up with several broad areas and quite a few reasons, but I thought I'd ask members of my ensemble, Ensemble Hespery, um, to come up with some ideas uh, to make the episode a little bit more personal um, and to get a sort of early music take on the issue. So Tom, our harpsichordist, Magda, our violinist, and Florence, our cellist, have all pitched in. We all agreed on the biggest factor contributing to levels of mental ill health for musicians, and that is poor working conditions. Musical performance, perhaps particularly in the UK, is just not well paid in early music as in the rest of the classical music industry and beyond. Most early musicians, though incredibly busy with their main performance activities, will need to find another source of income in order to make ends meet, no matter how successful or highly trained they are. Uh, Florence says, concert work and some teaching may garner higher pay per hour than some other jobs, but concert work in particular can be sporadic and entails perhaps an hour's lunchtime concert here or a two-hour evening concert there. There are also many expenses, travel, instrument repair and strings, unpaid rehearsals, unpaid admin time, unpaid practice time, resulting in performing musicians actually having a very low annual wage. Expenditure is high. We spend a lot on travel, um, maintenance of our instruments, purchase of instruments, um, and of course our physical health if we need treatment for an injury, a work-related injury. The vast amount of unpaid work involved in a musical career means that musicians often face stress caused by overwork and money worries at the same time. It can really feel like you're swimming against the tide. Low pay also leads to practical problems which can lead to depression and anxiety. For example, like other freelancers, musicians are often unable to get mortgages despite proving regular income and face things like higher car insurance, um, adding to money problems. Often we have to work uh, without days off for weeks on end and then have a period of absolutely nothing. Uh, we feel exceptionally guilty if we take time off for ourselves. Being a musician is really a vocation um, and we're always trying to strive to be as best as we can and it's quite difficult to find time to give yourself a break. If something upsetting happens in our personal life, we usually push through because there's no one who can really replace us in a performance or in a masterclass and it always feels as if our career development is at stake if we cancel. Uh, Magda described this as always having to be on uh, to perform, not being able to take time off, no matter what else is going on in your life. And over time, this pressure can lead to quite chronic exhaustion um, and then leading to depression and anxiety. Well, that leads me on to the second big challenge for musicians. Being a musician isn't really valued by society, both culturally and structurally. In the last year, during the pandemic, this has become very obvious, particularly in the UK, as both musicians themselves and the contribution of music to society have been completely ignored by decision makers. Being underappreciated, despite working very hard, can have negative effects on our feelings of self-worth, leading again to uh, ill mental health. 
There are so many conceptions, misconceptions about what it means to be a professional musician. On a basic level, it's a little bit difficult to explain exactly what we do, uh, particularly as early musicians, because not only are we classical musicians, which is unusual in itself, but we have a kind of our own community within that. Often we're stereotyped, we're maybe seen as uh, lazy people, uh, playing our instruments for fun without any direction or responsibility in our lives. Or alternatively, sometimes we're seen as tortured geniuses, uh, destined to suffer for our art, which apparently makes it okay. For me, one of the most difficult assumptions I encounter uh, is the kind of assumption that because our music brings pleasure to others, our own job, producing that music, must therefore be very pleasurable. You're so lucky people say that your work is your passion, and of course, uh, society often believes that because music is beautiful uh, and artistic, our jobs must barely feel like work at all. Now, of course, as performing musicians, of course we enjoy our performances. That's our opportunity to communicate our love of music with our audiences and to bring joy to their lives. But so often it seems rather ironic that when we work to bring joy and inspiration and even comfort to others through our music, we can't really derive the same benefits from it ourselves. When it comes to it, a concert performance is only a tiny, tiny proportion of the musician's work. We must also practice for the concert, send endless emails to concert promoters or agents, chase clients who haven't paid us for a performance or for teaching, maintain our social media channels, engage with the media. So we've got to develop a whole range of skills, all of which are necessary for the success of our careers, but are absolutely invisible, really, um, to most people. And sometimes these activities actually harm our sense of well-being. Florence, for example, says that she doesn't really feel at ease with social media. Personally, social media makes me feel uneasy and stressed. Many players post seemingly tremendous things, but when I talk to them, life is not as rosy as they portray in their posts. Managing social media takes time, but it is apparently essential. No presence on social media is a big red flag for promoters and the public. And so often, because of all these extra tasks, it's easy for the music itself to become forgotten, um, and we end up feeling that we haven't achieved our best. But, and of course this is a, another big challenge, we care so much about our work. Being a musician really is vocational, and so our work is inextricably bound up with our character and our emotions. Our relationship with our work is, as the help musicians um, found, integral to a musician's sense of self. If we fail, or perceive ourselves to be failing, then we have failed not only as a musician, but as a person. Our training doesn't prepare us very well for this. Even in early music uh, departments, we're trained at conservatoire level to be very, very self-critical and to aim for absolute perfection um, and, of course, to practice endlessly in order to be the best, though it's never quite clear what that might be. We also inevitably, therefore, compare ourselves with other musicians, but unlike in some other fields, effective comparison is actually completely meaningless and can lead to more intense feelings of failure. It can be very easy uh, to compare oneself to others and of course in music as in any walk of life actually everyone's on their own path, on their own journey um, and people's careers have different elements to them uh, but it's very easy to really directly compare oneself to something that you see in social media. And of course that's not a true depiction of what's really going on a lot of the time. Success in any area of the music business is unpredictable and doesn't necessarily correlate to talent. In many artistic industries, there's often an element of luck about being in the right place at the right time. Uh, of course that's just part of life. And whilst many things in music are uh, done by audition or an application process and very fairly. There's often quite a lot of underhand um, appointments and opportunities that go on within the music industry and that can be quite difficult uh, to measure up to. Of course, not all opportunities are dealt out in this kind of way. 
But still there are difficulties. Competitions, for example, often have their own agendas, which are never really clear to the musician. And each one prioritises different elements of performance. Florence says, Competition success is made out to be essential to raise one's public profile and fast is fast becoming the only way to attract the attention of concert promoters, agents and record labels who only seem interested in competition finals and winners, finalists and winners. For every successful competitor, there are dozens, sometimes hundreds of fine musicians being passed over and becoming dispirited. All of us agree on this one. While we all have won several competitions, we have sometimes found the process uh, quite dispiriting. Um, Tom is also very worried about the effect that the recording industry has on the standards that we feel we need to achieve in live performance. A really interesting thing to think about these days is about recording and what has that done to the music industry. It's really meant that we are expecting ourselves as musicians to do everything absolutely perfectly. Of course, on a recording, um, commercial recording, it's made out of lots of different takes a lot of the time. And so there's this real strive for absolute perfection. And wh where does that leave us um, as musicians wh when we our art is really something that happens in the moment and is very live? So overall, the reality of being a musician in early music, or indeed any other field of music, is ultimately incredibly rewarding but does bring challenges. The lack of control in, predict in particular and the unpredictability can lead to chronic anxiety. At its worst, anxiety can really affect us physically on stage um, and this sometimes threatens to end our careers. Um, you'll have heard of musicians taking beta blockers in order to prevent finger shaking or feeling nauseous. Um, and of course to be slightly nervous is, is perhaps a good thing. Um, we do need some adrenaline, but to be very anxious can really threaten our performances. It's very difficult for musicians to talk about all these issues publicly. Our working environment doesn't really make it very easy to admit that we're struggling, as we often feel that we have to keep up a positive front or lose face in our field. As Florence puts it, we're always expected to be playing at the very peak of our capabilities, creating beautiful music and cultivating a positive, creative mindset. But of course, no one can be positive all the time. So I asked Florence, Magda and Tom how they maintain good mental health in their working lives. Something we all agreed on is physical activity. Tom uh, likes to start the day with yoga. The first thing I try and do each day is to start the day well. Um, taking time to have breakfast and a cup of tea. Even if that means waking up really quite early, if I've got to leave early to do something. Um, I also do some yoga, which increasingly is very important for my well-being. This isn't news, of course. It's well known that exercise, if you're able to do it, can boost mental health. But of course, as a musician, it's actually quite difficult to find the time or the energy to uh, take exercise alongside a rather exhausting lifestyle. For us, however, even though we don't have time necessarily to go to the gym, often we do some other kind of physical exercise, a quick walk around the block, uh, or indeed not even a sport. Florence does a lot of gardening. She says that mowing the grass is pretty physical. Um, I do some highland dancing, um, but really just any kind of exercise, even for the shortest period of time, always, I feel, helps me a great deal. Here's another suggestion from Tom. And also really making sure that you force yourself to take time off when you have those gaps in between work and projects. Ideally meeting up with friends uh, perhaps who are not in the same profession as yourself, so it's time away from the industry. So Tom likes to spend time with friends outside the profession. Um, but actually, Florence tries to surround herself with people who are on the same musical wavelength as her and who are also positive. Um, I'm in between. I have musical friends who I share my worries with and I know that they'll understand. Um, but I also love spending time with people who know nothing about music whatsoever and learn more about everything else in the world. Developing other interests really helps me keep some perspective um, about my job and my role in the profession. Uh, Magda feels that a sense of work and life balance is really key 
Um, although, of course, this can be very tough to achieve uh, when you're busy. In the end, we all agreed that it's okay not to be okay. The results of the survey commissioned by Help Musicians UK proves that we're not alone, and at times we will need to seek help. Sometimes that means, might mean speaking to a friend, um, but of course there are times when it might be easier to speak to a professional. Now there are so many different places where musicians can seek help. Seek help. For example, Help Musicians now has a dedicated support line uh, called Music Minds Matter, uh, which is available 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. And at the end of the video, I'll post a link to that and also to several other organisations who provide support and advice in the UK for those struggling with mental ill health. So finally, time for some music. This is the kind of music that truly gives us joy and makes all our struggles worth it. Well, thank you so much for joining me today for this special episode of Pitch Point. Next time, I'll have a special guest on the show. Keep your eye out for a teaser, and see you then.